How's it going, Reef Keepers? Hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, this is probably the last video I'm going to make today. I know I've put out a lot. But uh, this video, I want to talk about the microbiome of our reef tanks, which is, sub, despite my high interest level in the subject matter, I, is still a subject that, quite frankly, I probably shouldn't be talking on because it is so, so, so complex, right? And I think that the subject matter actually turns a lot of people off because it is so complex. However, it has been proven to me by, you know, very intelligent people in reef keeping uh, who are microbiome, like expert level people. It has been proven to me that like you can understand the broad strokes of it if you do actually apply yourselves. So I'm just going to talk about like where I'm at with microbiome and explain what of it I can from my very base understanding of all these higher level concepts, right? So um, I think you guys remember in the podcast, uh, if you listen to the podcast, you'll remember, I fielded some questions from subscribers in a couple of episodes. And one of them was, what do you think the next big topic in the hobby is going to be? And I said, I think we're moving away from chasing pH as like a leading topic in the hobby and more into microbiome. And that conversation is being driven by, you know, as well as some other agents, a lot of it's being driven by reef builders and specifically Salem Clemens. And I actually had some people kind of say, no, that's not going to happen. And kind of reach out to me and they're like, that's never going to be a big topic. Like, what leads you to think that? And I was like, just hang on, just wait. And now it is a big topic. It's a significant topic, right? Um, it, it was a slow build for us to get into microbiome. But it feels to me like the more I learn about microbiome, the bigger the hobby gets. So that now I feel like the hobby is almost twice the size and scope that it was. And it was daunting before. And now I'm like impossibly daunted by the, the, you know, uh, by being faced with the prospect of needing to learn so much about microbiome. And I hesitate to say need because I don't know that people need to actually like hard learn some of this deeper stuff so much as I think they need to listen to people who are able to break it down and guide and direct them, um, through what the scientific process has yielded in recent months about microbiome, right? So my approach after, you know, months of all of this data coming out of Aquabiomics, Aquabiomics is a testing service that will basically give you a breakdown of what is contained within your microbiome. And people like Telegram have been testing different uh, supplements and solutions that are, that are marketed as you know cure-alls or probiotics or whatever for your reef tank and finding out a lot of interesting data about them <laughs> and in can so like aquabiomics is making it so that we can really kind of like figure out what exactly is in everything and if these companies are making valid claims or not and combined with the science that some of these leading voices like andrew bauma and uh, Salem Clemens are bringing to the table, we can kind of see that a lot of the things that are sold to us as these great concoctions we should add to our tank are either having no effect or a net negative effect on the tank. Uh, and a lot of them are based um, in a strain of bacteria called bacillus. That's like the main ingredient in a lot of these things. Um, Companies like Benepets put bacillus in everything and go out of their way to try to prove that bacillus, which is a terrestrial or land-based uh, bacteria, is a great thing for corals. And it's not something that is like a primary, you know, coral uptake. Like, despite the fact that we're forcing it on them, it's, it's not something that is a coral-associated strain of bacteria. There are strains of bacteria that are coral associated, but they cost a lot more money to create. And these companies can't just buy mass quantities of the bacteria from China and have it dry stored and shipped over and then dusted all over food or mixed into a bottle of stuff. So a lot of the reef keeping companies don't want to change. They just want to keep convincing you that their product is going to help your coral 
when really dumping a bunch of bacillus in your tank, along with whatever else they mix in there that they also have not proven anything about, may actually be feeding pathogenic things in your tank that are bad guys that want to take out your coral <laughs> instead of actually enhancing the coral, right? So because of this coming to light uh, through the process of, you know, testing all these different solutions and what have you, I've decided to stop dosing anything to my tank other than basic alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, and Kelkwasser. Now, granted, I didn't dose very much to my tank at all. The history of my tank's microbiome was like I used Fritz Turbo Start 900 to start the tank. Uh, then I very quickly after I started the tank had a bryopsis outbreak and used Fluco to kill the bryopsis. I then dumped more uh, Fritz Turbo Start 900 into the tank because I suspected that I had really hurt my microbiome despite no, knowing nothing about it. And right on the bottle for Fritz Turbo Start, it says, go ahead and pour in more if you want to. So I was like, all right, I'm going to reseed it with the same stuff that I had initially seeded it with. So I kind of like, you know, created some upheaval in the process, but I did add bacteria back in the same that I had started the tank with. And then from there, I, the one thing I've taken off recently that I was using was amino acid. So I was using, uh, what's it called? Acropower. So I was dosing little bits of Acropower into the tank and I just totally took that doser and that whole setup offline. So I've only got calc, elk, <laughs> cal, and magnesium going into this tank. Um, and that's what I'm going to stick with. I'm going to stick with this approach in light of Salem's article about DOC coming out which you guys should hop over on Reef Builders and check that out. And basically what that article and what his research, you know, that went into that article are, you know, presenting us with is a new methodology for like whole system reef keeping. And that new methodology is re relying on a lot of the tried and true things that we have done for a long time, like water changes, like utilization of a skimmer, but it's adding a natural aspect and he specifically calls out pushing for sponges because sponges will take DOC, which is dissolved organic carbon, I believe is what it is. Uh, they will uptake DOC, thereby making your tank water far, far, far better for the corals that are within it, right? So I have actually a lot of sponges in my tank. I have a lot in my sump too, but I was going to show you guys like all, look at all the white is all sponge. It's just growing. I have so much sponge. It grows back under the rocks. Like if this coral wasn't here, I'm sure that this little cavern behind it, like you can see there's so much sponge that grows back in there. And it grows under multiple layers of my rock. Like if you look in the seams of my rock, I have a significant amount of sponge. And I also have sponge that grows down in the sump area. So I've got like sponges like this. Like these are just sponges covered in like little bits of detritus that, you know, come down the overflow pipe. Um, and then if you look closely, like look at the sponge that is growing all down look at the look at this this is all sponge so a long time ago <laughs> i made a video in reaction to the first time i saw salem on reef therapy and he and raj kind of went back and forth about like keeping your system clean and like the you know should you should we be scrubbing out like tube worms and you know that kind of and sponge and all this kind of stuff and you know, trying to like keep a sterile system and Raj kind of plugged for the sterile system and Salem was like, no, we shouldn't be doing that. Our tanks are biological wastelands and it's a net negative to the tank. He didn't have it all put together back then. Right. And I'm, he would be the first to tell you, he certainly doesn't have it all put together now, but he's evolved on all this through his research and through the research of others to a point where he's actually able to put forth a potential methodology 
that could really be beneficial for people. And he specifically calls in this paper for a cryptic like canister filter that is just jam packed full of sponges. Like he thinks that's probably the best route to go for lowering, um, for, uh, for having an entity that is uptaking DOC to improve the quality of your tank for your corals. Right? So one, I'm not like all the way back then when I first heard him talk about the biological wasteland, I decided I'm not going to kill all these little critters and keep scrubbing out my sump and keep scrubbing, you know, the sponge off the rock. Like I'm not going to do any of that anymore. So I have not been doing that for a long time. And I have a, you know, compared to a lot of other people's tanks that I see a fairly significant amount of like sponge growth throughout my system. So I think that's a, a step in the right direction for sure. I'm going to explore some other possibilities for like enhancing the sponge situation, so to speak. Uh, my UV is a big concern for me. So like UV, I'm starting to not trust UV, right? So UV makes the whole DOC situation worse. This is my UV. It's the smallest UV unit that Aqua Ultraviolet makes, I believe. I think it's like, I don't know, 25 watts or something, maybe less. And just enough to kill, you know, like ick. And I have it not optimized, meaning it is not hooked up in line with any of my plumbing. What it does is, I have a little CJ pump down here that just slow pumps through it and then I just dump that water back into my return section. So it's not like 100% of the tank water is getting sucked through this thing, you know, a whole bunch of times a day. However, based on a lot of the research that's coming out regarding the microbiome in our reef tanks, there are, there's a lot of benefit to leaving your water column alone and not crushing it with UV, right? I don't know if I'm crushing it or not. I plan to do a series of um, aquabiomics testing where I eventually experiment with the UV and I see, hey, you know, like if I turn it off, like let me, let me take a baseline test and then I turn off UV for like a month or two months or whatever. And I just take another test and see what's the difference is the bacterial diversity, is the microbiome far more diverse now because I turned off this UV? I'm sure it will be. I'm not doubting that, you know, the, the people in the science community who are like, trust us, the water column and the overall microbiome, you know, getting put through UV, it's just bad for everything. I, I'm sure it's true. I want to see how bad, right? Um, I'm, I'm sure it's significant enough that it will catch my attention, but um, yeah, UV is like my last sticking point where, you know, I'm so, I like my fish and I'm nervous about ick, so I don't want to just throw UV out the window, but we're going to, I'm going to definitely weigh the, you know, benefit of doing so after I get some hard data on my own system about it. Um, and that's kind of where I stand with microbiome at the moment. There's so much more to it, guys. Um, I highly recommend listening to all these people who are talking about microbiome right now, not just Salem. He's, he's young and eager and hungry, and he's really pushing uh, the conversation. And I think driving a lot of people who are older than him to revisit the conversation or join the conversation for the first time in a long time, if not the first time ever. And there's so much more increased focus on micro, the microbiome and the, the health and diversity of it in our reef tanks. And it's super exciting to me, right? But this, from my common reefer's perspective, trying to pay attention to this information and like eagerly read it and absorb it and watch it, this is kind of where I'm at right now with my microbiome in reef keeping and like what direction I'm drifting toward. So for people who, you know, want to hear my thoughts on this kind of stuff or who have emulated, you know, some of the methods that I undertake, I figured I had a responsibility to kind of show you what my current understanding and, you know, what my current position and what my trends and where I'm headed with all of this is because microbiome is such a huge conversation for all of us right now. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's where I'm at with it. So feel free to ask as many questions as you want about it. <laughs> Again, I don't, 
I don't pretend to be an expert on it, but I am absorbing as much as I can about it and trying to understand it. So I would love to talk about it. Have a good one, guys.